Are you publishing no content books on KDP? Are you still using the same tired templates over and over again? If so, let's change your no content book publishing game with this simple tutorial. In this video, we will show you how to turn your no content book journal interiors for KDP print into stunning publications. Just a few minutes ago, I was sharing some do's and don'ts on publishing no content books on Amazon, and I'll include a link to it below. Hey, can I get my phone back, man? Yeah, sure. I'll trade you for one of those banana stickers. Mm. That's, that's cool. Oops. So dude, did you, uh, did you try my no content book interior templates yet? Yeah, man, it's, it was freaking sweet. But did you know that you didn't just have to use them as line journals? Really? Really? Well, check this out, dude, come on. Okay, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to kwheelerbooks.com slash templates in order to work along with me. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You'll need to set up an account, but it's essentially free. You can be able to download this. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to hit resume course because that's where it's going to be at. And then we're going to go into the most popular trim size, which is six by nine. There's choices of no bleed and bleed. No bleed means you have to work within some margins. And if you try to deviate outside of those margins with any kind of graphics or even fonts, they're going to reject it. However, with bleed, you're able to kind of play around with things and paint a little bit outside the lines. Now, bear in mind, you can't have any of your text outside of the margins. And you'll see what I mean in here in just a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and select bleed because we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. I'm gonna download this. It should be noted that when you use this particular template, you can use it on PowerPoint, Google Slides, and even Mac Keynote. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open this file up through PowerPoint, make this bigger, and you're gonna enable editing. So remember how I was telling you about a bleed? So this is where we're going to be able to do just a little bit more. So in the event that you're doing a bleed, keep in mind, so for this one, it's six by nine, but since we're doing a bleed, the interior actually has to be about 0.125 inches wider and about 25 inches taller. So I've already worked it all out for you. So you can essentially just use any of this in here. So you're gonna see right away that it says right panel and then left panel. Now, uh, it says even pages. This is actually even pages. The right panel should be the odd pages, so don't get thrown off here. So all of our odd number pages are gonna be on the right-hand side. Even number pages are gonna be on the left-hand side. All right, so essentially, you can go in here and put in the title of your book. So let's just say, for instance, that this is a, I don't know, a teddy bear workbook. We can change out the font if we wanted to. So let's say I wanna go ahead and we're gonna use Liberty Sands. And if I wanna change the size, I can move it up or down, however I wish to. And we're gonna move this on up here. Now, we're gonna to try to keep our text inside this red line right here. That's our margins, because if we get that text outside of there, KDP is going to send it back to you and tell you it won't work. So for instance, we go really, really, really large and we happen to go beyond like for instance, you could see right here, that's outside of it. We're gonna to have to move it down just a little bit. All right, when we feel confident about the text and where we have it at, what we can do is left click on the panel and then all we have to do is just hit delete. All right, so this is probably not the most imaginative one for a teddy bear workbook. So we can always just go through and change it out however we wish. For now, for the point of this exercise, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as is. All right, let's go into the left panel. Again, if we don't plan on using it, what we can do is left click on it and then hit delete. Same thing goes for this and then delete. Now, for some reason, it pops up a box here. All you gotta do is left click on it, delete that. So we're just gonna kind of scroll on down. If you have copyright pages, you're gonna put your copy right here. So for instance, we'll say, and whatever our disclaimer might end up being here, we can highlight the whole thing by pressing Control A, and then we can go ahead and make this a bit smaller. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of that panel. So now we're cooking on the front burner. Again, we're gonna go ahead and left click on this panel. I'm gonna left click here on the text and we're gonna delete that. 
And you see this pops up again, that's okay, we're gonna get rid of it. Now we're coming down here. This is where I want you to kind of think outside the lines. If you really want to kind of just do the same old lined interior, that's fine. You have this all cut out for you. It's perfectly set. In fact, all you'd have to do is if you want to duplicate it, you can press and click and drag right over top of the lines. You press Control C and then Control V. And then all you'd have to do is just drag it into place and boom, you're all set here. So everything's pretty much set on this one. We go boom. And if we want to change out the name of this, say we wanted to move this to the teddy bear and I wanted to kind of keep that the same text, Liberty Sands, great, it's good size, not too bad. All right, I'm gonna delete this last line so it looks a little bit better. All right, same thing can go down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this text box. We're gonna hit Control C and we're gonna come on over here. Let's get rid of this other text box, delete it. Control V and it'll drop it right in place. We want to get it centered according to the margins because remember there's going to be the crease right here that goes into the actual binding of the book, also known as the gutter. We're going to go ahead and put it right here. So now it's perfectly centered into the actual page. So uh, next thing we're going to do is let's highlight a couple of these lines. So that way we finish out the rest of our template. Great. Now it's all there. We're going to go ahead left click on that and we're going to hit backspace. All right, so now over the left hand side, you're going to left click on the fifth slide and then press your control key and then left click on the sixth slide. Now we've got those two highlighted here. You can see we're going to hit control C, control V and we can do this till the cows come home. Look at this. We need to at least have 24 in order for KDP or most other platforms to take this. In the event that we want to use this, what we're going to do is come on over here. The very first thing I want you to kind of remember is always save as your project. So say for instance, this is going to be my teddy bear. All right, I've got it saved here as the PowerPoint presentation. Always recommend that you keep a backup and don't get it to where you're wiping out the template because you're gonna use this template again sometime in the near future. So we're gonna hit save. Awesome, now let's see about exporting it as an actual PDF file. So what we'll do is hit save as Click the drop down and select PDF, hit save. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna save it there. Okay, so what if we really wanna kinda of spice things up? Cause what if you're tired of the same old line journal interiors? Well, we can actually use these interiors for so much more. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and I'm gonna open up the actual file that we had used as the template. Hence why we did a save as. We'll hit file and then open and then find the file that we'd used. Excellent, so we're starting from scratch again. So we can go through the whole process again. Uh, you're just gonna go through, do your title page, so on and so forth. Okay, so once you come down to these other pages here, we start at five and six, I want you to kind of think of these as your templates. So uh, if you wanna keep the lines, you're obviously gonna to wanna to copy and paste them. So do the same thing as what we did before. We'll left click on the fifth slide and then press control or the command key for Mac and left click on the sixth slide. So they're put together. We're gonna hit control C, control V. So if we wanna keep holding on to these, we're gonna hold on to them right there like this. I'm gonna come back up to the fifth slide. We're gonna select that. And let's just say, for instance, we want a few lines, but we don't want too many. So let's go ahead and we're gonna highlight this and highlight the ones that we don't want. You have to highlight all the way across. So we're gonna hit delete and it'll remove that right there. Now again, kind of like what I had shared when you wanna do the title or your header here, you can go ahead and change that out. And let's say I wanna go ahead and just copy this, control C, and we'll come on down here and switch this out over here, control V. We're gonna keep it right in the margins. See how we did that? All right, let's just pretend like, for instance, that we just wanna keep these lines here on the next page. Maybe part way down, we're gonna go ahead and slip some stuff in here, and we're gonna kinda of play around with it. You can feel free to, to paint outside the lines, but one of the areas I just wanna kinda of show you, and it's really neat, you can access it from home page, but I typically go into insert or even go into design if I wanna play around with some stuff. So insert's where we're gonna play with today. I'm gonna go into shapes. So for instance, we can grab a box and let's just go ahead and we're gonna click and drag that box down here. You notice the guides start to pop up and it shows us? Nice, there we go. All right, now I'm on shape format. You'll notice that up there. 
And keep in mind that as long as it's not text, we can literally take this box and put it all the way off if we wanted to. All right, now let's just pretend for instance that uh, I don't wanna have this particular color. Maybe I just wanna have it slightly gray or something like that. So what we'll do is hit shape fill and I'm gonna go ahead and choose that gray coloring if I wanted to. If you choose coloring and you end up printing in black and white, that's okay because they'll automatically switch it over to gray scale. Just fair warning, if you're using some rather saturated colors, they typically come out being very dark when they go to gray scale. All right, so I've got my box here and we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, I went and kind of glossed over this real quick, but you have the shape outline. You can always get rid of the outline if you don't want it, or if you want to have a very thick outline, you can always do it like that. I'm gonna go without the outline. I hit Control Z. All right, next thing is, now let's go back into Insert. We're gonna use the text box, and I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna click and drag it on down. So let's just say, for instance, now you can use whatever you want to in here. This is just some random stuff I'm coming with uh, off the top of my head. So whatever your workbook might be, you can always just play around with that. So we're just gonna kind of just click and we're gonna drag it right into place. I wanna stay in theme with this particular font here. So I'm actually gonna go back over. And so we've got this right here to where someone can kind of fill this in. It's kind of a choose your own adventure, if you will. Let's go back up into the odd numbered page. And let's play around right here for just a moment. So we're gonna leave the other ones up top. I'm gonna highlight these ones on the bottom. Let's go ahead and delete it. I'm gonna insert in something a little bit different. Maybe we can use some icons. Maybe we can even use some smart art, which is a lot of fun, actually. You can use word art. We can insert a text box of some sort. This time, we're actually gonna do a table. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click and drop down here. And based on the number of cells that I wanna use, it'll fill it on out. So let's see here, we're gonna go on over and great. Now, I'm just gonna click and drag this on down into place. And I'm gonna click and drag it so it fills a little bit more out here. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. And maybe I say, we'll insert in here a text box, days of the week. I'm gonna click and drag this on over. If you can't quite see that, that's okay. We're gonna move it on over here. Oh, but I've only got six boxes here and about five boxes down. So that's probably one box too many. So that's all right. What we'll end up doing is this highlight right here. And what we can do is just left click on that and we can just go ahead and remove that. There we go, we cut it out of there. Now, let's say now that I wanna insert another column, all we gotta do is highlight that column, right click on it, and we're gonna go ahead, hit insert, columns to the right. We could have done it to the left if we were feeling like it. There we go, so it's looking pretty good so far. I'm probably gonna end up making this one black and white, so I don't wanna have anything too dark as far as this orange color goes. Let's click and drag this down just a little bit first, and then let's go ahead and we're gonna highlight the whole project. We're gonna hit table design, and I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the shading. We're gonna say no fill, but I wanna have some borders on this. So we're gonna hit all borders. And you notice it pops up here. Now, if we wanted to make the line thicker, we could do so over here, but I'm pretty darn happy with this. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, keep in mind, you can always play around with all these different things. If you've got pictures, you can go to like Pixabay, drop some pictures in here. You can use any of your own pictures, any of your own art. There's so many different types of shapes. You can put graphs in here. So if, say for instance, I wanted to put a graph at the very top, we can go ahead and have a little bit of fun with that, but uh, that's probably not what I'm gonna end up doing. And then we even have some icons that we can kind of drop in here. So let's see if we can find a teddy bear. Perfect, look at that. It's a panda bear, close enough. Insert. We're gonna move him on up here and we're gonna make him just a little bit bigger. There we go. Alrighty, now that we have everything, let's say that we're, we're happy with this. This is a little bit weird, but um, you can see we can play around with this and spend hours just doing this. So I'm gonna left click on the uh, background and we're gonna delete that. Now don't worry about anything spilling off the page. As long as it's not text, you're gonna be fine. I'm gonna go down to the left panel here and I'm gonna delete this. Now, kind of like what we did with the line journal interior, what we're gonna do is left click on both of these, all right? And then we're gonna hit Control C. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these other ones here because I only keep that as a backup. And what we're gonna do is hit Control V on the side here. And we're gonna hit Control V until we're pretty happy with it. So let's say for instance, we wanted to do about 100 pages. We'd go all the way up to 100 pages, so you'll see on the left hand side, how many pages you're at. Alrighty, so now that everything's set, remember we don't wanna save it over the template, so we'll go over to file, hit save as. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save that as a PowerPoint presentation because I can always come back later on for some reason KDP spits it back to us and says something's wrong, we can always come back and troubleshoot that. Uh, typically, whenever I'm doing any kind of templates, I would like to test one out before I start using it in other areas. So we've got that set, now we have to export it over to PDF. All right, so I've used a different way this time, as you noticed, and this one's gonna give us the option to go standard, publishing online and printing or minimum size publishing online. We wanna stick with standard so that way it keeps all the quality together here for this. So I'm gonna hit publish. Okay, so if we were to go over and actually open up our teddy bear workbook, we're gonna have it and double click on it. It's asking me to open it, there we go. And there we go. Now it should be noted that if you're using some kind of uh, really weird and random font, uh, it may not embed properly. So uh, I actually, uh, between takes here, I actually had to switch out my font because it was actually some random font and wouldn't properly embed. So if you ever find that your document is blank, you gotta go back and probably put a font that can be embedded in the PDF. There's workarounds, but that gets into some nerd level stuff, but I thought I'd go ahead and keep it simple here for you. So what'd you think, man? Oh, sorry. I left when I couldn't see your screen anymore. But, uh, but yeah, you're, you're right. These, uh, these tacos are pretty good. Oh, uh, so do you, you want to tell them where to get the templates at then? Sure thing. You can head on over to kwheelerbooks.com slash templates and check it out. Check out our previous video on no content books, where we discuss some do's and don'ts if you want to be successful in this business. Until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler, and remember to write right. I never got my banana sticker. Well, you can answer my question then. I mean, do you publish no content books? Uh... Yeah. <laughs>